Hello, and welcome to my studio. Uh, this is uh, our second episode with Brooke Cormier, uh, where I'm going to be mentoring her over the course of the next year as she pursues her career as a professional artist. So, Brooke, welcome to our studio again. Thank you. Episode number three. Um, and today, we're going to talk about getting ready for a show. Uh, you have your first show and sale coming up. Yep. Where really wants to say hello. <laughs> Um, and so we're, we're going to talk kind of nuts and bolts about how you go about kind of setting pricing for everything and then even some stuff about kind of just at the show, like how do you engage with clients and how do you prepare for something like this. Um, so for now though, you've brought all of these pieces and these are all the pieces uh, that are going to be at the show. Yes. And we, have, we just have another couple, we don't have room for them all on the table. Um, so I, I just want to talk, first of all, can you tell me about the mushrooms and the other ones that were on canvas paper and maybe hold them up so that people can see. I'm just going to move this one out of the way so you can move them in here. Yeah, so these ones were um, for my little assignment where I did six in one day and three in one day. And I did them on canvas paper because um, I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out. Um, but then I really liked them, so I went and I bought um, this... Um, Birch plywood birch. board, yeah, and I got um, acrylic gel medium, and I just did it on the back of, or spread that on the back of the canvas paper and on the canvas or on the board, and then just flattened it out, and then this was the final result. And I also painted these because I wanted it to yeah. match a little bit more. So that's what. And you've already yeah. sold all of these. Yeah, right? and these yeah. and all the mushrooms are sold. Actually. So, so that's great. It's yeah. great. It's great when you sell stuff before you even have a sale. Yeah. And was that that was through Instagram? Um, through someone seeing them on the internet? Or on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. Okay. So that's another great thing about it. Just shows you the power of social media that you haven't even gone to your first show yet, but you've already had six sales yeah. just from showing stuff on social media. I know it's been and nice. yeah, how much did it cost for each of these birch panels? They were around six dollars. So that's a really great option, and they look they look really really sharp. Mm -hmm. I imagine she's going to hang them as a grouping. The, yeah. the woman that bought them. Yeah. Um, so that's for those of you out there. Um, again, that's just a great way to present these because we weren't sure in the first episode. You know what? How what are we going to do with these? Yeah. Um, and they turned out really really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and when you so when you when you coated that back, did you put like? something on top of it and weight them down. Yeah, I did. I just had the, a glass chessboard. <laughs> yeah. Put that down on top and stack some books on top and of it. And how long did it take? It took for each? really quick to dry and everything, yeah. but um, the only thing that was so time consuming was I had to cut each trim thing. Up. Yeah, like trimming each thing. Um, and then I put it on and there was still some extra, so I had to flip it over and get my exacto knife and cut each thing. So I mean, I watched a lot of TV while I did this. <laughs> but they turned out really nice. Yeah. And then let's bring over the uh, black and white ones mm -hmm. as well because so, they also turned out nice. Yeah, I really liked these ones so I wanted to. And I did a few touch-ups on them too. Nothing minor. I just, this guy was bald before I put yeah. some hair on him. <laughs> and just added a bit more light in this and you And you left a little bit of a reveal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that actually looks really nice. Mm -hmm, because I, I painted them on 9 by 12 paper. And then once I taped them down to like my desk, then I ripped the tape off and there was still that little bit. So I yeah. had to just kind of make do. But I like it because I like the way that it um, frames it a little bit yeah. more. So let's talk now about pricing because that's kind of the big thing. We talked a little bit about it last time. And for those of you that didn't see the last episode, I encourage you to watch it. Um, but the main thing we talked about is there's a price and there's a value and the public determines what the value is and if your price point is under that there's a good chance they'll buy if they're interested mm -hmm. um, and so these you had priced at 25 each. 25 that's after mounting and that's after yeah. mounting. Yeah. so that's a, a that's a really good deal it's a really attractive thing for so obviously you know when you sold six right away it's like okay I could have got more money <laughs> yeah probably, probably yeah. but I'm good you don't know. To see them go yeah, as well. it's, it's kind of like if you if you had them priced at forty and nothing sold, then it doesn't tell you anything. But that tells you at least that when you do little things like that and mount them up, um, twenty five dollars is pretty much a guarantee that you're going to sell them. Um, so that's great. So, but now we have to start talking about pricing of the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And 
So the, the, what I find is kind of the easiest way to do it is to kind of group things together that would be the same or similar, mm -hmm. first of all, and then kind of try to decide how much you want. And then one thing is, again, you don't want to overprice, but you also don't want to be in a situation after something sold that you're disappointed that you sold it. Like yeah. you always want to feel good. Knowing you could have got more, that's good, but you still want to feel good. And that's like with the mushrooms, right? Yeah. It feels like, okay, I could have got more, but there's 150 bucks. You can go out and buy a lot of art supplies. Yeah. <laughs> with, right? Okay, so let's, so the mushrooms, let's first of all see what we would consider kind of in the same price range as the mushrooms. And I think when we go over yeah. to these three here. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, and another thing that I, that I like to do, sim similar paintings uh, are paintings of the same size. It's a good idea to price them the same. The, a lot of people go, oh, I really like, you know, you might say, I really like this one, so I'm going to charge 50. These ones, not so much, so I'm going to charge 40. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when you're, when you're having the show, someone might actually really, really love the banana, or they wonder, well, why is it priced less than this? Yeah. So if, if it's, there's, there should just be kind of like a benchmark of good enough for you to put it there to sell. And then pretty much you price, it, it's a good idea to price similar size works with the same price. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally you might have an exception and we'll talk about that when we get to the night scene yeah. maybe. So if these, and so these are what? It's probably about the same square. Yeah, these are five inch, by seven right? and this is six by six. So. so would you price these the same then? Yeah, uh, so, so that's uh, $25 each, mm -hmm. which is a really good bargain uh, for whoever gets these two. <laughs> and so there's nothing else in the, that price size. So I mean, that, that makes it easy, right? So yeah. these are, these are 25. Oh, how are you? Um, so the other thing comes when you, are you going to have like on a table or? Yeah, I have an eight foot table that they're okay. giving me. And then I've got a bunch of small easels and yeah. then also my one big easel that yeah. I think I'm going to bring and put this painting on. Yeah. Um, so I've got a bunch of, I've got, I think I've got like five or six small ones that yeah. I can put whatever I want on. And then I guess for, I'll just somehow arrange the Because you, you, you want to think about, I always think it's a good idea to have the price there clearly visible for people because a lot of times people, I, I still get people, I don't know, you've probably had that where they, they ask you, well, I, ho I hope you don't find this offensive, but can I ask how much it is? And it's yeah. like, no, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just the fact that people aren't, aren't sure about how to, mm -hmm. to go about um, that, or they might look and they might think, oh, those are probably really expensive. But, yeah. if, but they see, oh, geez, these are only 25 bucks each. It's like, you know, so it, it's, it's always a good idea, I think, to always have the, the price clearly um, visible. Now, you don't want to kind of shut it out because this is not a garage sale. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have to think about that. What I used to do, a little trickier because you've got a lot of small pieces. What I used to do, um, so when I used to do the festivals, um, I would just put a little sticker on the side with and write the price on it and I would just let people know um, the price tags are around the side you can just see because that also lets me know you know when someone's in there and they just walk around your tent and look um, and they leave okay that's a certain level of interest but when they go up and they look at the price yeah, then you know at least yeah. okay they're a little bit interested and then if they're going around looking at you know if you see them look at the price and then they have a conversation with their spouse or something then you know, okay, they're, they're more interested at least than the person who just walked around yeah. and left. So I like it that if they just have to look and do something to see, so you can tell when they're checking the price because that's more interest. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you, you might, I don't know how you do it, or you could actually even just put little, um, like piece of paper under, underneath yeah. if they're sitting on the table. Yeah. Um, just and even like tape it to the back so that it stays yeah, it sticks, sta out, sticks out under there, mm -hmm. something, something like that for the ones that are on the table. Um, and then if the ones that are on the easel, then that works well. And all I used to do is, you know, the mailing labels, the, the, the print out the mailing address. Yeah. I would just cut those um, with the scissors so they like width or lengthwise on, widthwise on it. So you'd get a little sticker and then just write the, the price on. Okay. So it just helps you to know when they're checking out the price yeah. that you should, you know, pay a little attention to that client. Okay. okay. So we've got the little ones 
all priced. Mm -hmm. Put these down here. Okay, and so then we get into um, kind of what would be the next size up in a similar kind of price range mm -hmm. to each other. So I think these, and obviously, so these are going to be sold unframed, or are yeah. they going to be framed? No, they're unframed. Unframed, okay, because mm -hmm. that also impacts the price. Yeah. Um, so we talked earlier about, I said, doesn't, how long a painting takes you shouldn't impact the price. However, there are exceptions to it. Um, and so this little one here, I would say, is not how long did that take? That was about three days of work. So. Yeah, and it and it looks like it, and it's a it's a it's a beautiful little painting that has again just something special. So it's it is even though we generally want to price stuff the same, it's okay occasionally um, if there's a piece that, and you can just say that this was painting in this style in the super high realism just takes a lot more time yeah. um, and so because of that you know you can kind of say well my super high realism work is priced at this level and my other more painterly stuff is priced at a lower level and I used to do that when I did my portrait work yeah I would sell you know, a, a portrait that would you know be a thousand dollars for a certain size portrait and my landscape that size for 250 bucks back then because partly because of the time um, and partly because i had already achieved a lot of success and notoriety with my portraits and with my landscape work when I started making the switch, I was kind of a beginner at that. Yeah. Um, and so you're kind of in the same boat here where with this, you've really, really kind of, you know, paid your dues and you can do amazing work in the high realism. Um, and over here, you're still kind of experimenting a little more. Oh, yeah. um, and so you give people a bit of a break on the price for for this stuff. It's not to say that it's not a better painting. Like this piece here, like some of these pieces, I might say I like them as much, but obviously, again, it does to a certain degree, when something takes 10 times as much work, yeah. then it's okay to be uh, to be charging more for it. So we're gonna put the, the high realism ones together and we'll price them separately. Mm -hmm. So what were you thinking for any one of these pieces here, what were you kind of thinking in terms of, of price? Well, honestly, I'm at a bit of a loss because I do want to sell them, but again, I'm, I'm so new at pricing my own work that I feel as though I'm kind of lost. Okay, <laughs> so, then, so then something to go back on is is kind of just like the size of the piece so then you can't go wrong if you're kind of pricing it per square inch um, and then that's just it is what it is mm -hmm. um, and because you don't want to get into saying well which is a better painting or whatever because you know you could show these five paintings to 20 different people and you could have each of them be a favorite of someone yeah. um, so i i would say then we just kind of do it based on size so these are $25 for the little ones, right? Okay, so that's about two and a half times, so it's probably, I think it's a little over four times uh, the size. So what would you think like about $99 or $89 or something like yeah, that? Like what were you thinking? For this one in particular, I probably wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to go over $100. So okay. I honestly think that this would be like, Okay, that's good. And I like the way that you're, you know, that, that you're kind of erring on the side of, you know, you could get more, but um, maybe you, maybe you could, maybe you maybe, could. Maybe, yeah. So, but, but that's a, that's a good thing, because what you need to do is you need to kind of set a benchmark, and then from that, you can, you can go to the other pieces. So if you're going to say this is $79, and that's unframed, um, and how's this for size? Just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and what were you thinking about these two? 
Well, then again, it's also tricky because these are the exact same size and the exact same frame, but I like this one a lot more than I like that one. Doesn't matter. So I can't. You can't, no. Yeah. Uh, no, not. So here you can actually get away with doing that because you can just say, when I paint in the really hyper realism, it takes me an inordinate. Inordinate, um, inordinately more time to do, and I have to be compensated for that. Mm -hmm. But these two probably took about the same amount of time, right? Yeah. yeah. And so then you 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 have to let the viewer decide which is better. Um, and and again, you don't want to get in the you don't you're not in the business of doing that um, because you'll you'll shoot yourself in the foot because there may be people. I, I, there probably will be people where this might appeal to them more mm -hmm. and if you've priced it less then they're thinking well what's wrong with this yeah maybe it's not maybe I don't like it yeah so I would say yeah you need to anything you're going to show should be comparable mm -hmm. to to the rest of your work mm -hmm. um, in terms of like quality so I would say these like what do you think about ninety nine dollars Hundred dollars is like under a hundred dollars is a really nice place to be. Yeah. Um, and so when I price it, do I write ninety nine dollars instead of like a hundred dollars? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a difference. It seems that's why you see stuff such forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Because people think it's in the forties instead of fifty. Yeah. Right. Even though with tax, it's going to be more. So if we're going to again, so seventy nine for this, ninety nine for this. I'd say this one's like what, 69? Yeah. Something like that. And then this little one over here. This one is also a high realism one too, but it's not as much as those ones, I think. So yeah, and I would kind of, I would price that more along with the, uh, the black and white images mm -hmm. because it's similar to that, but just then add for the framing costs. Yeah. Um, and again, you can you can fine tune these these prices a little bit, um, but I think that's so you're you're kind of going from twenty five up to ninety nine, and I find that's good because then you can kind of just say stuff. Well, I want more than I want for this, but not as much as for the, the ones that are ninety nine dollars. Yeah. And you can kind of you know figure out again when it's different sizes, you can adjust the prices. Mm -hmm. um, but always a good idea to have you have pieces the same. It's like trying. It's like if you picked your favorite mushroom and charge forty for it. it yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense because right. they're all kind of in the same quality. So um, yeah, that's good for these. Okay, so now we're gonna deal with the. Um, the high realism kind of work, which is going to be a different kind of pricing um, formula than the other more painterly stuff and the, the exercises that I was giving me. And so even though these fall into that um, kind of out of, or the kind of category of exercise I gave, they still turned out really nice. And they were still in your very high realism yes. mode. Um, and so if we are selling this one, for $99 and this one for $99, where would you feel comfortable with the pricing for these? I would say probably around like $70 to $80. Okay, yeah, so that's that's good. So like $79 or $69, mm -hmm. whichever one of those um, you kind of think. And then I would charge kind of the same for the black and white island scene, and then you could bump it up though for the framing costs. Yeah. And just say that's, you always have to have a reason why something's more expensive mm -hmm. that is not, well, that's a better painting. Yeah. Because then you're saying this one's not so good. Yeah. So if it's not so good, then you're better off just to not even um, show them. Mm -hmm. And then when we get into this one, so I'm gonna say the cows and the uh, night scene and the golf course painting. All should be priced with kind of the same formula mm -hmm. in terms of uh, whatever we decide per square inch, then they should be fairly close. So a piece that's twice as big should be twice as much. Yes. Um, so then this piece here you've done, so the show actually is gonna be at Whiteville Golf Golf Club. I'm, my wife and I are a member, and mm -hmm. Brooks' mom and dad are members there. That's actually how we met. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be there this Sunday. Yeah. And what time is the show? Um, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. So this is actually a painting of the 12th hole. 
at yes. Lake Up, right? Yeah. Looking, looking down from the, uh, the, uh, the 11 pole. Yeah. And you're probably going to be doing prints of this as yes. well? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for those of you Whiteville members that mm -hmm. are watching, I know there's a few of you. Um, yeah, there'll be prints available uh, for this as well. And so what were you, did you have any ideas on the pricing for any of these three pieces? Um, well, see, I think it's kind of difficult because I was looking at this golf course painting as like a lot different than when I was doing these ones mm -hmm. because I specifically painted the, this one um, with the mentality of making prints. Yeah. And, um, and I spent a long time and I was really working in product mode with this one, okay. whereas these ones, this was actually um, like when, after we first yeah. met and I was just kind of like building up my inventory okay. a little bit more. So when so then you don't have to price these exactly the same. And you can also say that people that, you know, you were doing this specifically um, for the idea of doing prints and anything, you know, I only do the prints of the piece, pieces that are really, really special. Um, and I ended up, I end up spending a lot more time on them because I know it's going to be reproduced. So then you can say, well, this is priced at a different sort of formula yeah. than the others. So what were you thinking of selling? What, so what, what type of prints are you, are you going to be doing paper or canvas? Um, or? I was thinking G clay yeah. again, but yeah. on paper or on, on paper. canvas on paper. Yeah. Okay. And so then what were you thinking of selling the prints for? because that impacts the price yeah, of the original. Yeah, I know. Um, I, well, it depends on how much the prints cost, but I was probably thinking around $150 each okay. for prints. Yeah. If that. Okay. So then, because there's a, there's a good formula um, that the original should cost somewhere around four to five times at least what the prints are. Okay. Um, and the print should be like around 25%, no more than 25%. Otherwise, people are like, well, why, you yeah. know, why would I buy, why would I buy the original if it's that yeah. close to the print or why would I buy the print if it's, that, if it's that much? So if you're thinking of around $150, so then you're probably thinking like six, $700 for this. Was that kind of in the ballpark? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking more around like, like five to six hundred dollars. Okay. I probably wouldn't go as high okay. as seven hundred. Okay. So then, so that's actually, that's, I think you're in the right ballpark mm -hmm. too. Um, and especially when you're going to be doing um, prints. Mm -hmm. And so then we get into these two. Yeah. And what were your thoughts well, on that? Well, I think that since this is around um, twice as big as the mushroom ones, mm -hmm. I was thinking probably like fifty dollars for this. Or do you think? I think more. More. Yeah, I think just because. Again, I know. I know. I said I don't like to get into who can say this one's better or whatever. But I can also tell this one. This this one falls into the realm of this in terms of the yeah. amount of time and work that went into it. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and so I would I would say the same thing that this is you know this is when you're working in really hyper realism. Um, and it just takes an enormous amount of time. I would sure I wouldn't let this go for less than a hundred bucks. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's up to you. But, yeah. <laughs> but again, kind of ninety nine dollars, uh, whatever. And a hundred, hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars too is a really sweet spot because usually people have permission. <laughs> if yeah. There's a couple. You know, if, if you're getting up into two, three, four, five hundred dollars, um, people usually aren't allowed to walk home with a painting. They just pay three hundred dollars for it. As a fait accompli and show their spouse yeah. but when you're under that hundred dollar uh range then it, it's kind of you know it, it's in that impulse buy kind of thing and people aren't going to get yelled at when they come home yeah. and especially <laughs> when your work is is a really really good value i mean for those of you watching this 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 is when you really if you're collecting art um you want to you want to kind of discover artists at this stage um because by the time you get to my stage There'll be nothing for under a thousand dollars. Never mind under a hundred dollars. Can't wait. Um, so yeah, but I would, I would just ask other people. Ask your parents too. Yeah. But I think this one here, um, yeah, I, I think you could group it in in with this and just say that these um, are again when you're working in a real hyper realism, um, it just takes that much more time and you have to be compensated for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for this one. Um, what were you thinking about this? What's the size compared to here? It's oh, it's about the same. About the same. And Maybe a bit smaller. Yeah, so I would price this 
kind of like in that hundred dollar range or yeah. ninety nine dollars or yeah. something like that. I'd say that's reasonable. Okay. Oh, and I also have this one. Too. Oh, and we've got the big one. Yeah. Okay. Let's and this is going to be framed. We're actually yeah. going to put it in the frame. So what were you thinking for this? Um, this one took me a while too, obviously, because I was working tell. in high realism. Yeah. Um, and with the frame and everything too, I was probably thinking 250 to 300. Yeah, that, that's, that's so somewhere in there, that's easy. Um, easily defendable and I think it's a bargain too. Um, you just do have to be, again, so it's kind of, you, you just have to be aware and think as people are going to ask you, well, why is this one so much more when it's actually a smaller piece? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can say, you can get into the whole thing that, you know, because you were doing this for prints and you, you know, you took an exceptional amount of time doing it and there's a lot more work involved. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this, uh, yeah, this piece should be several hundred dollars easily. Um, yeah, it turned out really nice. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I like it too. Okay. So I think we've covered the pricing yeah. on everything. And we've talked about, again, having the price visible. Um, and you have your business cards. I yes, saw that I on Instagram. Yeah, I'm happy about so that. So that's great. Um, it is really important to, to give people something with their name on it if they're interested because you know, people come and they see an artist and then, I mean, I've had people run into me literally 10 years later when it's like, oh, we've been looking for you. You know, yeah. like they saw me at a festival 10 years ago and then they forgot my name and they didn't take a card or they took it and lost it. Yeah. Um, so having something um, that has your name on it that people can take with them is really important. And do you have a bio done yet? Not yet. Okay, you're going to do that? Yes. So if, if you need some help with that, I'll be happy uh, to help you. And when you're starting off, it's kind of hard, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, in four years and you can say that, you know, you've been, you've won awards here, won awards there and been in this show and that show. Um, when you're starting off, it's just kind of, just kind of speak from the heart. So, so for you, because you're really young too, you can talk about, you know, how you started painting and drawing at a young age and, and kind of, you know, and, and continued to do that while you went to university and now you've made the decision to pursue a career as a full-time artist and, mm -hmm. and talk about kind of this process and the, with the fact that I'm mentoring you. And when you do that, it, all of a sudden it's like, gee, that's three or four paragraphs. It's just people want to know who you are and what your story is. Yeah. Um, and have a picture of you on it too, with, ideally with your work mm -hmm. um, is good. Um, and so yeah, so you've got your bio and it should be kind of prominently displayed. Okay, so I would print it out and just have it there for people to read yes. if they want. You also might want to do, because you don't have that many pieces, I would print it out. So, you know, ideally you want to do it like on the photo glossy paper and you can have that like on the table or mounted, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you can just even like stick it down on foam core and put it on one of the little easels. Yeah. But I would also print out just on regular paper, your bio, like one for each painting. So that okay. if somebody buys a painting, then they you give them not only use your cards are there for kind of everybody, but anybody that buys a painting, you give them your bio too, because people want to know about ours. Or there's a really good chance because of the time of year that people might be buying some of these as gifts, right? So yeah. then the person that gets the the painting, if they get the bio and they know about the artist, then that makes it yeah um, a little more special. Yeah. Now, do you have any questions for me about? Because this is your first time actually. Like you've sold work before and you've done commissions, yeah. but in terms of like being there with your work, standing there as people come by and decide to, this is your first time doing something like that? Yeah, that definitely, because I've never done a show yeah. of any size before. Yeah. So um, I guess I don't really know what to expect um, at White Veil, vale, like how much yeah. traffic is coming through. And I know that a lot of the people that are coming are going to be my friends and family too, yeah. that I've been emailing and, and whatnot. Um, and that's and that's good too. Most of my early paintings, they're in family and friends. Yeah. <laughs> so those people want to come out and support you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I do think too, like that you will find. Well, hopefully, even from this video, but we're going to do something on Facebook too. Just a quick little thing to help promote this uh, later in the week. Um, but it, it, it can be really nerve-wracking standing there yeah. behind your work. It's the one thing I don't... I miss talking to the people, 
Um, but you'll find that, you know, when you're, when, when someone comes up and starts, especially when someone starts asking you about a particular piece and then your heart starts to kind of go, Oh, maybe we got a nibble here yeah. and you know, and then if they say, well, it was nice talking to you, they walk away, then you yeah. <laughs> crash again and then you're up again and down again. Yeah. Um, so just be, try, try to not let yourself get too caught up in that. And it's not, um, you don't live or die by the success of one show yeah. just as if you go and sell out that doesn't mean anything about how the next show is going to do or whatever and if you sell nothing it doesn't i, I can't i can't imagine that you're going to sell nothing but i I've, I've been shut out before when i used to go and do festivals you go and and it's like you know part of that's part of being professional artist is showing up you yeah. know so you go there you show up uh, because the one thing you can't control is how many people come and who comes mm -hmm. and who's there. There'll be people there just kind of at the golf course, but there'll be people, you know, coming for this because if someone doesn't want to buy a painting, doesn't like, <laughs> they're not yeah. going to, they have no interest in buying a painting and they just happen to wander through, you know, there's nothing you can do uh, to sell them. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say, yeah, don't, uh, don't get too concerned of reading in too much one way or the other. Um, I think you'll, again, if there's, if there's any amount of people there who are all interested in art, then you'll, you'll do really well. Um, but you can't control. Yeah. I'm just comes. trying not to have any expectations yeah. at this point. That's just a, going in with an open that's mind. A, and you've already sold six yeah, too, so right? So it's a, a good starting that, point. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and then what I would suggest to you, it's, it, it's a good idea to, before you go into a show, um, think about each painting and, and try to come up with, you know, 30 seconds or a minute of talking. Cause, cause someone may say, can you tell me about this piece? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's, if, if you've gone around at each painting and just kind of done it in your head, it's kind of easy, but if you haven't, it can, you can kind of yeah, you can kind of get caught off guard and kind of freeze up. Um, but the one, and so what I always like to think, think, when I'm thinking about the paintings, it's kind of a story. You can tell a story behind the painting. Um, you can't talk about the work without sounding like a papa's ass. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Like I went on at the last time about all of the great things you did here. I can talk about someone else's work like that and you could, but if you were to talk about your own yeah. work like that, yeah. you know, so, so that you can't do. Um, but what you can do is you can talk about sometimes the story like of the cows here mm -hmm. of, you know, you came to this, you know, you saw these cows and by the time you got down there, they all came over and were mm -hmm. looking at you just like three dogs. Mm -hmm. um, or you can tell the story of, you know, that you, what you really were trying to get here was to, you know, you, you it was a real struggle to try and get that mood. Of, of the misty day, you know, and have it kind of come. So you can talk about the work sometimes if you're talking about it, kind of like a struggle or something you overcame yeah. or whatever, but you yeah. can't tell people Not how like, good it is. This is really good. This That's one, really look at how, good. <laughs> see what I've done here is I, yeah. you know, you start talking like that, it's like, yeah, you, know, you just sound, and some artists do that. <laughs> Personally, I, I couldn't do that. Um, but think about some story about it. And the good thing about all of these ones is you can talk about, well, you know, that I'm mentoring you mm -hmm. um, and that I'm giving you assignments. So this was done, to try, you know, and so there's the story of that one. You were trying to do, do a kind of like a typical Ontario landscape, but mm -hmm. thinking about Van Gogh and his approach. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but you just want to have something that kind of starts the, uh, the conversation going. Yeah. And, and what, I always, what I always found awkward um, is when to kind of come Start in talking, and talking to people yeah, yeah. And, and when, and, and, and when to just kind of hang back. Yeah. And what I always used to like to do is just as people come when they're looking, that they'll make eye contact with you. Um, and you know, I just say hello and, and then just say, do you have any questions? I'll be you know, happy to answer them and then kind of let yeah. them look. I always like to give people, if it's a couple, I like to give them enough space so that if one goes, oh, I like that, and the other one doesn't, he's like, I don't like that, without worrying about, oh my God, the artist is right there. Yeah, so you, you want to give them, them enough space um, 
that they can have a conversation and even if someone doesn't like a piece can say so. Mm -hmm. um, but you just got to watch them. And then when you'll, you'll kind of get an idea when people kind of keep coming or they're having a conversation. Um, and I would always just kind of just get a little closer just to, or get in their line of sight so that they can see you, but not too close. Mm -hmm. um, and then when, when people, when people are serious, they really like the piece, right? It's, it's, so someone says, oh, I love this piece and I love what you've done here. And you know, that's like, okay, now you want to move the conversation to sales, mm -hmm. but you don't want it to be like you're a used car salesman yeah. kind of coming on. And so what I always found, actually I had a, a friend of mine, um, Shell Orling, who's a member of the Canadian Watercolor Society, who kind of took me under his wing when I started doing the festivals. And he was a master at this. And he would, he would make jokes, like if you can just, so he would, he would say, I still use this line all the time. Someone says, oh, I love this piece. You say, well, it's looking for a good home. Yeah. You know, and they, they, they laugh, yeah. but, but now you've broached the, and they go, oh yeah, it would look nice on my wall. And it's like, well, you know, and yeah. it, it then eases in. Or to, he used to say people would go, oh, I really love your work. And he'd go, so uh, you, what are you taking, four, five, six? Yeah. Um, but, but it was always, always tongue in cheek, but it, it got the conversation mm -hmm. started about the fact that these are for sale. And mm -hmm. this is, you're here to earn a living. Um, so those kind of things, it, and it's nice to have, so those two are two that I use all the time. Um, <laughs> And, and it just, again, it, it kind of starts the conversation moving towards the fact that these pieces are for sale, but it's not like if someone says, oh, I love it, and say, well, it's $499. Yeah. Kind of like, oh. it's, yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, but just, and, and again, if you can get people laughing, I would find people, because people would, I'd have people in my booth and they go, oh, we really love your work. And, you know, and they're just about to leave. And then you crack a joke with them and then they come back and then the next thing you know, they're there 20 minutes later and they end up buying a piece. Yeah. Um, and, and I've always found too, that if someone likes your work, um, and if you engage with them and they have like a really pleasant experience, then they're much more likely to buy. Yeah. And so that's that whole thing too, about kind of just kind of having a sense of humor and kind <laughs> of just- Turning on the charisma. Turn, yeah. It's just, you know. And in a very self-deprecating way too, that, yeah. you know, or or some, you know, I, I say to people, I still say to people all the time. They're like, oh, you know, like, you know, talk about my work. And I say, oh yeah, my mom loves my work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like. So I guess that's it. Thank you for joining us again. I hope you found this interesting. Um, and for any of you who live in the kind of east side of Toronto, all of Brooks Lovely Works are going to be on sale at the Whitevale uh, Golf and Country Club which is just near the 407 and Brock Road Pickering. Yeah. Um, and if you just Google Whiteville Golf Club, you'll be able to find the, uh, the address in the map. So that's it. We'll see you next time.